All right, guys, tips video here. Not a hitting tips video or a pitching tips video. Separate this year, it's going to be together. It's going to be just a unified video. How to get better at MLB The Show 23. Um, it just kind of change things up, right? Because maybe you don't have time to watch both videos. And I don't really think there's enough information to give you guys another hitting tips video, right? I, I can't do it every single year. It's just, I mean, it's MLB The Show, end of the day. I'm going to adjust this to be very specific to MLB The Show 23. So let's get into it. First thing you do, main menu, all the way to the bottom left, go to custom practice, hop into it. I selected AL All-Stars versus the Phillies, just as an example. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you guys how I would warm up to deal with something that is a very prevalent scenario that gets people out a lot. Sinkers inside on the hands, or even just worrying about sinkers inside on the hands. A hard sinker, righty righty. Let's get into it. How do I practice for that? Well, I go to practice type, I go to batting. Trout versus Wheeler. I set the pitch frequency. By the way, the custom practice thing is so much better this year. It's a much more specific and uh, helpful tuner. Instead of just picking which pitch will be thrown, you can pitch the frequency of each pitch. So you don't have to just turn off all pitches or turn on all pitches. You can kind of get a nice balance with one getting more than the other. So I've maxed out sinker frequency. Uh, all the others are about normal. Pitch location, I'm gonna keep it nice and simple. I'm gonna go inside. You click on inside. You can click each and every individual quadrant if you want. I'm gonna go inside in general. Those are the pitches and the locations you're gonna be worrying about with sinkers. There we go. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna be worrying about that. Now, how would I deal with, the, if, I'm, if I'm struggling right now versus sinker guy, you know, inside in the hands, righty righty, how do I adjust? Well, first of all, what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go over here, cause where is it? PCI, anchor, I like it free. I forgot to change that. You can just kind of anchor whatever you want. I'm gonna anchor inside and just worry about cutting on that pitch right there. Is this on Legend? It is on Legend. Okay, I haven't played Legend in, in forever, but yeah, so I'm gonna anchor here, cover my weakness, and just watch as these pitches come in. I'm also gonna do, we'll go outside and inside, just because I'll cover the weaknesses, but I'll show you how I adjust the outside pitch. But basically, the, the, what you wanna do is you wanna just take away the weakness, right? You can work to your strengths inadvertently or sort of on a passive basis as long as you cover your weaknesses. What I mean by that, as long as you take away the weakness of a sinker in on your hands, the outside slider, or pitch you might have a nice, you know, handle on, or a fastball on the outside corner that you can kind of mash to, you're gonna be just fine with that. You'll be able to cover that, right? You'll be able to get to that nice and, and simple, because you're already good at hitting that. And this is gonna sound ridiculous, right? But this is the old hitting trope, right? You wanna, you wanna do something well when hitting, envision yourself doing it. It's kind of working like that in MLB The Show with the sinker, right? If you want to hit a sinker inside, you have to kind of prepare, not imagine it, I guess, maybe, but prepare to hit a sinker inside, which means imagine you're going to get it and then swing accordingly, even if you haven't seen the ball really in that spot yet. See, I waited back on it, got it, knocked it down the line, I adjusted. This year, just lates are a lot more friendly, so if you're a little bit late, but you're extending out on a pitch like that, you can actually keep it fair a good deal of times. I just find it personally so much easier to adjust to the inside sinker when uh, I have my PCI anchored here and then to everything else. It just feels nice, feels natural. Say like just going over there and watching that pitch on the corner, I feel confident in my ability to move over there on all angles as long as I have this spot locked up. This is the one where you need to have good, like incredible timing for. Just missed that one. So yeah, we'll, we'll bang out a sinker real quick and then we'll move on to lefty lefty. I'm not doing just sinker in one spot, by the way, because I don't want to, it's obvious and easy if you do that. The best way to train, the best way to train on movie the show is to give yourself a realistic scenario. So it doesn't mean just one pitch in one spot. Mm. I haven't had coffee today, you guys can't tell. All right, I was all over that, just a little early. If that was a sinker, boy, would that have been annihilated. I have sinker frequency up the most and I haven't seen that pitch at all. Just because I haven't seen a sinker in like 12 years, even though the frequency is up, I'm going to lower these pitches to here. See if that adjusts things a little bit better. Not quite. Not a bad swing. See, I'm, the adjustment is what's important here too, right? It's almost a bomb. It just, it just, for me, it makes more sense as opposed to starting outside and working inside to just kind of cover the pitch that gets quicker on you. Sinker, boom, smashed on a, on a good spot. That's how you do with that. Now let's move on. Similar situation, Ranger Suarez. Sinker frequency up, cutter frequency up, these other pitches. Now, how do you deal with a lefty who has a sinker cutter? This is a perfect situation. So what do you have to worry about? Well, you worry about this pitch on your hands, sinker inside, or a cutter outside that's going to drift away. The cutter outside is going to get you thinking about sinker timing, and you're going to roll over on it, right? That's what the goal of it is. That's the pitch everyone has nightmares of. My goal here is to really take away this sinker inside because 
Oh, that's pitch is disgusting. That's the one that's going to break your bat. You're going to have a really tough time hitting it. It's going to be one that dominates you, right? If, if your opponent sees that they can get that pitch by you, they're going to really just start abusing it. All right, that's, a, that's another example, right? So another pitch you got to wait back on is you're thinking sinker inside or cutter low and away or up and away, and then you get a cutter inside. What do you do? This year, I felt like it works the... It actually is the, is the smoothest in terms of being able to see a pitch deep in the zone. Like that. I feel confident in my ability to, first of all, recognize the pitch out of the hand. It just seems more obvious to me this year. I don't know why. And I feel like the swings are smoother and faster through the zone. So I'm not as panicky about hitting sinkers. See, that was a just lay, but that ball was still even... It was smoked. And also, you don't have to worry about getting, on like getting underneath everything, perfect launch angle, perfect swing, because there are base hits this year, man. Right, you can actually hit base hits. So you don't have to worry about like, swinging early like you did in 22 and hit, trying to lift everything. You can kind of just swing like intelligently, I guess. These aren't general hitting tips, guys. I'm just covering the stuff that everyone wants to know. I can't catch sinkers inside. I can't deal with cutters outside. I can't deal with that combo. What do I do? You know what I mean? Sliders kind of apply to the same thing as cutters. Also, I do the same thing with my PCI most of the time with lefty lefty. I kind of either started here or I anchored here. Beautiful. That movement is just so much better for me. It's starting inside, moving outside. That's how you deal with that. I'm not gonna go too deep into that approach, right guys? Go over it real quick again. Righty, righty, lefty, lefty, same deal. Cover inside, it's the hardest pitch to hit. Worry about the sinker, approach it with that timing in mind. And then just, if you see something even remotely starting to drift outside, really, really overemphasize letting it get deep and don't worry about everything else other than just putting the, the PCI on the ball, right? That's it, it's the most important thing. Now, pitching. Pitch with Otani and we'll have a batter, I guess. So, um, you know, actually I'll, I'll do a different a different pitcher. Someone who has more of a standard mix. Fred Valdez, sinker cutter. Okay, how would I pitch a righty with a lefty pitcher who has a sinker cutter mix like Fran Valdez? Well, one thing you have to notice first immediately is Fran Valdez has a circle change that's faster than his cutter. It's very strange. First thing I would do as a, as a pitcher is abuse this runoff corner pitch sinker. It's not mashable, but it looks good enough where they're gonna probably commit to it and either in 23, you can't just swing at everything. They're either gonna foul it off barely or miss it or roll over on it. They're not gonna get a bunch of redos over and over and over again. Now, how do I use this cutter? I generally avoid throwing these pitches, these cutters to the corners because you can kind of mash them. I like throwing the cutter like around here where you have to be precise and fine with your PCI. All right, I gotta throw good pitches first. Um, like in these areas here, sinker cutters here, because you have to be very precise with your swing here on these pitches. You can't just slam to a corner and hit everything. So you're basically challenging your opponent to be very, very accurate. All right, all of a sudden, I don't know what's going on, but I can't pitch. I really should probably drink coffee before recording these. Best tunnels in my mind in this game. Well, if you want to get someone, say it's OO, how would I start this at bat? I would, prob I would probably start here. I'd probably start with a runoff sinker, low and away, get into kind of chase, see if that works. Perfect dot. Now, how do I counter this? Well, they're thinking, oh, I gotta worry about sinkers outside or just sinkers in general. Oh, but the cutter exists. So I'm not gonna default to thinking about a circle change. That's what I go with the circle change in this spot right here. They go, oh my God, sinker. And then they overcommit and they swing through it. Now they're O2, they don't know what to do. Um, I'm either going to bury a curveball, which I'll do right here. Like that, strike three. Or I will get him just absolutely mind blown with a cutter elevated a little bit, but back door. Because I don't think they're going to weigh back on it, right? I think he's going to expect some hard stuff. And if I want to get real cheeky, I could go with uh, a sinker or a fastball up and in. It doesn't work as well this year. Can't really super dot, but... That wasn't bad. The CPU destroys sinkers though up in the zone because they're not supposed to be there. Fastball's a little bit different. That same principle applies. So that's how I would approach a righty lefty scenario where I'm a lefty pitcher. Now we'll just change the hitter. Uh, pretty simple guys. It's actually really easy to exploit lefties in this game. Most people cannot hit, the, hit this. Cutter up and away. It's a roll over to second base like half the time. Next pitch type, change up again, just Either here, I actually don't mind it on the corner to lefties here, but I, I kind of mix it up. Change up right there, it's a rollover. Um, and then if it's two strikes, I either throw, I throw sinkers up in it or down in it, either two strikes or no strikes. Never after a strike. I don't really know why, but I just, I, I think that it works better that way. That's just an incredibly hard pitch to hit. And if you want to really throw people off, I prefer a hard slider for this pitch, but a cutter front door, when then looking inside to not get beat, 
they'll swing right through that or they'll take it. And obviously the hardest pitch in the game to hit, in my opinion, a lefty lefty sinker up and inside with some velo on it. I missed my spot, but you guys get the principle, right? That's how you pitch. Very simple, not complicated, right? Those are the tips that I have for hitting and pitching. It's advanced tips, right? It's not just basic stuff. If you guys wanna watch basic hitting tips or in-depth hitting tips videos, I have a playlist linked uh, in the description that has all my tips from previous years. The ones from 22 are just extremely, extremely applicable. Um, and I would say that the mastering PCI control video from 21 and 22 are probably my finest work in terms of how to actually get really good with your PCI. So I have a video on PCI, how to master it. That is in there. I have two videos on that. I have a video on how to recognize pitches out of the hand. Check that one out too if you guys haven't already. Uh, I might make an updated version of that. But one more thing I do want to talk about before I leave is that there is a different type of hitting this year. Uh, it's more about, it's not as friendly, right? It's not as friendly. Um, what does that mean? Well, first of all, if you guys want to know my, my full settings, settings link in the description for that video. But just for the sake of PCI, I'll show you what I'm using. It is uh, bat center, cyan, transparent, 50%, no fade out. Hitting this year, you have to be more precise. You can't just be swinging early at everything and hoping that everything leaves. You gotta be good with it. So what do I do this year? What has my bet approach been? I take a lot more pitches now, right? I don't swing, you cannot swing at, at pitches on the corner early in the count. And even if you square them up, expect them to be hits. This game is a lot more about being intelligent hitting, right? They, they've mentioned timing being the most important thing in their mind, and then PCI placement, other things like that. So you wanna really focus on timing and just kind of keeping your PCI around the middle of the zone. And until you're at two strikes, man, don't really divert from swinging. Don't swing at anything other than like around here. This like small, the small square within the, the rectangle of the box, right? You want to swing at those pitches in, in the early count. You don't want to start venturing out to here and this is two strikes. Because I've hit the, the most perfect outs people send me or show me or tell me that are a problem are perfect outs on pitches literally dotted like a sinker down in, excuse me, down in on the hands. <laughs> uh, I used to try and not curse these such videos, even though I'm a sailor mouth. But it's the sinkers down and in on their hands and they hit a perfect on it and it goes into the left fielder's glove. And I'm like, great swing. That's about, that's going to be a hit probably 75% of the time. The least amount of times perfects are going to be a hit because it's a dot. But yeah, that's, that's my point. So the biggest tip I have this year, if you want to know how to hit in 23, it's definitely harder. Take more pitches and really focus on hitting only early count pitches that are located there. Don't venture out to pitches on that because you'll, you'll be finding yourself getting real frustrated. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, man. I hope it helped. I'll catch you guys next time. Please, in the comments, if I didn't cover anything you want me to cover, I will continue to make videos that help you out. Um, I just want to know what you guys need, right? I, wa I want to answer your questions. I don't want to give you guys questions to answer. I want to answer yours questions. So let me know what your questions are in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace.